and we do need to bring this context to it because when I talk about exercise and for the most part not moving the spine we need to understand why that's being said because there are people that say we should move the spine we need to make the spine strong in flexion and we need to make the spine strong in all different movements now if you look at the literature you will find that in when your spine is at full flexion and it's loaded that is increasing its risk of injury when you move the spine with higher loads that is increasing its risk of injury now the context that comes with that is the load if you have zero load on the spine so if you are doing um, you are picking a pen up from the floor you have license to bend down from your spine and pick that up because the load is so low that it's not really going to have a huge effect on it if you have back pain and flexion is a trigger for your pain then it's probably more effective to do it with a neutral spine so you can see that if you've got a healthy spine you can bend it much more than a person who's got an unhealthy spine that has trouble with lower back pain in flexion so we need to understand it and there's there's a million and one different scenarios that would slightly change the how we would use the body but from that perspective if you have a healthy spine you have more license to move it when it's unloaded if you have pain in the area then you it would be more advisable not to flex it if your spine is triggered or if your pain is triggered with flexion so there there's context to why that's being said so with regards to the exercise that i'm prescribing the reason that it's being prescribed is we want to minimize the load we, or we don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on the passive tissues of the spine we want to challenge the muscles if we want to challenge the muscles as i've described we aren't really challenging any muscles in the lower back because there's only a few down there there is quadratus lumborum that is um challenged in a side plank that is challenged in a farmer's carry so there are exercises for that but again it's not a it's not a movement muscle it's a static contraction muscle because it's there to stabilize so with regards to the muscles that we want to be challenging or the areas that we want to be challenging it wants to be around the lower back rather than of the lower back if that makes sense so that's why i've chosen these exercises and it's good practice to start from the perspective of maintaining neutral spine and then as the back becomes more conditioned it then gives you the license to move away from that and even if you've got such good back health you could even lift with um a, 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 a slightly rounded spine as long as the abdominals are braced so again there's context to it and there's reasons why you can and why you can't i wouldn't necessarily go into a gym and lift a deadlift a uh, 100 kilo deadlift with a rounded spine um or doing your one rep max with a rounded spine that's going to cause you a problem but if it was 10 kilos or 20 kilos which is i don't know 20 percent of your one rep max let's say then it's probably not going to be too much of a problem but again that depends on the health of the spine which we need to understand so i could go on on those scenarios uh, for a long time because there are a million and one of them as i described but for now from the perspective of a beginners that wants to build their low back strength endurance number one is statically contract the mid back muscles two is activate the glutes and three is build the abdominal wall as well try and maintain the, the neutral spine to be able to minimize the load on the lower back whilst maintaining as uh, like maximal activity at those muscles so many thanks for watching my name is chris from christopher training i'll speak to you in the next episode